Hi everybody, welcome back. Hope you're all well and having a lovely day. Today I'm just going to be um, showing you a little bit about texture and how we can add a difference in your neuro art or in any art really. Um, I've got some gloss medium here and I'm just gonna pop some in here. I'm going to do it using tissue paper. So I've got an ordinary white piece of paper here. I've got my, tea, I've got my wipe in case I need it. And this is just, just a simple glossing over like this. You can uh, take your time and enjoy it and, you know, try and think of about it like you do with your neuro art where you're just relaxing, you're just playing, you're not thinking about anything and, you know, you come here for your nice relaxing time, yeah. And then I've, I've got my gel medium on there and I'm going to take some white tissue paper and I'm sure you've all seen this done and I'm just going to um, screw it all up. Lots of nice screws. And then straighten it out, and then I'm just going to lay it gently over the top, like so. Feels a little strange when your hands doing this. <laughs> So you create the creases that you're wanting and that you're, you know, that you you that you're wanting to do, and then you gently go over the top again. I'm going over the top again with mine, with gel medium again. And it creates a lovely surface. It makes it all wrinkly and all nice. And you can, you can move your wrinkles around um, to wherever you want really and uh, just don't worry about it just roll my sleeves up again putting plenty on but I'm being careful at the same time because it, at the end of the day it is tissue paper and you know I don't want it to um, rip so okay and that's just this is just on a piece of card. Uh, next, I'll show you how we can do it onto canvas. There's no difference really, apart from the fact that, you know, that you have to press it and do it down the side, so. All right. So, I'm very impatient, so I'm going to try and dry it off with a hairdryer. Until you know that it's, uh, you know that it's um, nice and dry, and then you can just either rip off or trim off the edges. I prefer to um, to trim off with a pair of scissors because it could still rip backwards onto your page. So, but you get the general drift, and uh, I'll show you the next stage. Gonna trim off the edges now. Pretty straightforward. So here we have it now. I've uh, trimmed it all back, and as you can see, it's made a lovely textured area for you to begin your work. Can you see that on there? See if we can bring it out with a little bit of paint. So I've got the palette here 
you all know I like to use these bluey greys trusty old colours it's watercolour and I'm just going to brush it over the top just on the inside here so it brings out all the lovely creases that you've made now be careful I don't want to put on too much paint because if you put on too much paint it, if you even with watercolour it could end up filling it in so do be aware of filling in all your little gaps it just created so be aware of that and uh, you know it does cover over quite nice but uh, like most of my watercolour painting um, I like as you know I like it to sit on the top not underneath so um, you know I don't like it to sink into the paper like watercolour does so yeah so here we have all the lovely creases that it's set off can you see those So over here, now I'm just going to start and add some, make it a little bit darker. Start and add over just on to the left hand side, I think. As always, as I like to work. Although I do show you different ways, but uh, in Neuro Art as well, I do like to create something first. I think it's, uh, and then to Neuro over the top. I think it just makes it nicer, really. So just going a bit darker now, keeping on the left. it in here you know instead of worrying because don't forget this side's still quite wet but instead of worrying about you know blending and I like to break all the rules I am a mixed media artist so I don't care I love to experiment so just mix it in and uh, it comes out 99% of the time much nicer you can always go back in and create lighter areas so now that your ball is starting to look a lot more 3D-ish. Okay, so I'll continue on. filled in, filled it in and added some nice colours to it and uh, it's lovely to paint on actually and the nice thing is it can just wipe away with either a little bit of um, isopryl <coughs> um, alcohol or a baby wipe with isopryl on. Um, somebody on here didn't like me using baby wipes so what I've done I've bought the ones that are uh, the ones that can um, uh, biodegradable uh, baby wipes and they've cost me a fortune so I hope that that's uh, put your mind at rest and uh, so um, yeah so these can go back into landfill and everything so yes so right the next thing is I'm going to dry it off so that's all nice and dry and uh, I'm very pleased with the effect it looks nice on its own but now it can add neuro lines on top and um, because of you this is why I've used gel medium because I don't want I didn't want it to set too hard you see um, so it's going to be quite difficult to draw the neuro lines over the top so uh, um, but I just wanted to show you the state of my hair dry look <laughs> it's got paint all over it and <laughs> those artists have these hair dryers don't we <clears throat> I have got a heat tool as well but uh, 
it's not very often that I use it so right okay so I'm just going to draw over the top and here we have it guys so and just a plain neuro ball um, I've gone over it I've added done all this texture look this was just with watercolor paint the things that you could do with this is absolutely endless um, there are other things that you could add on here I mean this is just on an ordinary piece of mixed media card I mean you can do this on a canvas um, I'm going to have a try actually I've got a little tiny one a little tiny canvas here and I really like the effect so um, but obviously when you're doing it on a canvas you can set it uh, with gel medium but what I would recommend is first and foremost with any um, canvases they say that they come primed when you're buying them a little bit cheap like these I mean these are this is a cheap one they say that they come primed but um, the, the, I suppose that they are but it's nice to reprime them again so if you've got gesso gesso all over the top and then you can some people I've seen I've put um, their tissue paper straight down onto the gesso but I don't like to do that I I like the feel that gel medium gives me because it gives it like a shiny sheen effect to it afterwards uh, and then you can put your, so your gel medium on and your tissue on just the same as what we've done and uh, seal the top part down but, the, but leave it hanging over enough that you can uh, just fold it under and do the sides as well because it's nice on cam some canvases to go around the sides as well and I don't mind experimenting on these little cheap ones and um, they're good fun and sometimes it, you you know the, the the loose cheap experimenting it turns out to be like a really really good um, effect in the end and that you can use you know and put it down in your journal it's like oh yes that was like really good I remember that so get it in your journal so you don't forget um, it's surprising how much you do forget when you move on to certain things but yes I'm really pleased with the effect of this one and uh, what I didn't like just there is that's gone has smudged a little bit too far there but uh, I didn't rub too hard because it, it, it'll just come off but um, so um, there's always fa way, phases and ways of um, fixing things um, so I'm just going to come around a little bit just make it a little bit more kind of like this shadow drop in it here is a little bit if you do a drop shadow it makes it look more 3D you see you see it makes it look, 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 look a lot more 3D and of course um, I like to do my splatters that's my signature so um, I think like um, a different color contrast altogether of uh, splatters on top so I'll do that next So now I'm just adding, um, I want um, some tiny splatters going around the edges. Can you remember me showing you? So it adds like it's little, we've got a little bit of movement to it. Um, so that's what my next job is. So I'll just, uh, I'll do that next. So there we are. I'll just bring it up close to you. So you've got all your lovely texture and then on your paper just gone over with watercolours and then just drawn a circle on it and um, dry don't forget to dry your layers in between try not to go wet on wet because well it just doesn't work very well uh, in this just try and dry it out so can you see can you see all the texture very difficult for me to show you on camera but there's a lot of texture in there now can you see that sideways on and then of course because the ball is has got these splatters coming away from them 
it looks like it's encased in the neuro lines but it's also uh, it looks like it's got movement coming from it as so though it's spinning and the light shining on it and it makes it really pretty I think in a, in a frame this would look really nice and uh, I should pop it on my wall I think behind me for uh, in my little studio so I hope you've enjoyed this video guys um, I've written as much as I've enjoyed making it um, if you did want to anchor this ball down you could put uh, I'm not going to do it because I like it because it looks like it's floating if you put a line here and a line here and then you put a shadow coming from the bottom of the ball it will anchor the ball down as though it's an object on the table so people who are doing realism that's a good way of anchoring your work down and um you know anchoring it all down so um yeah it makes it nice so um i'll just turn the camera around now Ah, hello. <laughs> yeah, so um, it would anchor it. It would anchor it down um, then. But you imagine then you could do that with a bowl of fruit. You could do it. You know, if it was anchored down, like it, if you put the line about here, going across the page and here, um, it will it will make it look like it's sitting well forward on the table. And using these nice colours here and here, the warm colours for bringing it forward. It almost has a Rembrandt feel to it because of the dark areas and then it's pushing the ball forward, which is strange because when you think about it, what happens with the ball is, with this colour, is it's quite a cool colour. So really it should knock right back, but the, the because of how I've done it, it's brought it forward. But I have enjoyed the, um, the texture side of it. Really nice, really nice. Um, effect so um, yes I don't think I've got a little uh, mount mat um, um, here at the moment to be able to show you um, which is a shame um, but yes I should pop that on here I think and it will look nice next to these other balls that's on here look <laughs> that will look lovely okay I hope you like the video and I'll talk to you all again soon um, Happy Sunday <laughs> and um, please like and subscribe and um, and then you'll be notified when the next video comes out. It will come up automatically for you. So uh, let's try and get these likes up and these subscriptions up high. I'm aiming for a thousand before Christmas. So uh, let's do it. <laughs> okay then. Thank you. Bye.